I got Freddy making some mounting brackets. We're going to put some shelves in my tool storage area. Because this area is just one big open locker. And it's empty space, so I've always got stuff stacked up in here, but of course stuff falls all over itself. So having some shelves in here to organize is going to be a big asset. So I just marked off the lines where I wanted to put the shelves. And then we'll just drop these in on top of some braces. It's got to make a couple of different, a couple of depths. I want them removable so they'll flip up so you can see I've got some bigger tools that I'm going to put on the bottom. This one here. So when I need to bring the sander out, I can just flip this shelf up and bring the sander out. We can use it outside and then put it back in when it needs uh, to be stored again. So it's going to be very nice. Much better use of the space. We keep all of our heavy duty stuff down here. That's all our replacement alternators, starters, motors, everything that we've got is wrapped in plastic and just stored right there, low down to the center of gravity of the boat. And just in a locker that we can't use for anything else. So that's perfect. So I will get out of Freddy's way and let him mount in the rails. And then we can start looking at the shelf sizes. So we got a couple cut out that should be perfect. And this will give us a lot more effective and efficient storage space. One more little upgrade for the lady. So while Freddy continues on with some of the shelf making in the cabinet down below, I've got a bunch of templates to cut out for all the new Ray Marine gear we're installing. But this first panel that you see here is actually going to be the mount for our new gimbaled stove. That would be the two burner gas stove that's going to be situated just underneath the new induction cooktop. The induction stove is there predominantly for when we're at anchor or when it's fairly calm sailing and the boat is less than 15 degrees of heel. If it gets much over that, then we lift up the induction stove and the two burner gas stove will be right underneath on a gimbal. So it will be self-leveling no matter our rate of heel and we can always cook even if we're heeled over in rougher weather. Plus, it serves as a great backup just in case we have any electrical failure. These next smaller pieces will serve as the mounting panels for all the new Raymarine instruments that are going to be located at my helm stations. I'm cutting out the three holes for the two instruments and the main autopilot control that will now reside here. For the other side, I'm making a matching panel but leaving it as a blank template right now for future expansion. the beveled edge on our trim pieces. So now that'll all get sanded down, sand this smooth, re-varnish, we'll be ready to go. Same thing with this one, just got to finish cutting these holes now. So we got it already beveled already. So we'll finish all that with sanding once I finish cutting these holes. And these panels, of course, are going to be the new replacements for the panels at my navigation station. This particular one will house the two chart plotters, the wind instrument, and the backup autopilot control. That one's perfect. And that one's perfect. Now we just need to take those edges down a bit with the sander, maybe eighth of an inch, sixteenth maybe. And that'll line up at the back. I'll put a piece of strip of wood across the back to fasten it in with. And we will be good. Okay, so I got the majority of my cutting done, except for the two pedestal mounts. So that's going to be up next. Uh, but we're getting there. 
one step at a time. Now we got Rick is doing the sanding of the pedestal, so that's cool. Gonna get them looking stiff again, sand them right down to the metal. So he's looking after the first one, then we'll take off the second one and get it going as well. The guys are up on the bow, working on my teak work. So they've got the varnishing under control. Uh, how goes the varnish? Pretty good, man. Working good? No oh, yet. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. It's really well, This is looking good too, huh? So that's two What's coats. The the rails are looking nice. Uh, this rail's all done. There it is. Yeah, you can see they got these rails all sanded and varnished. That's two coats. And now we're getting my trim pieces done. First coat on, seal everything up. Excellent, good job guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bien. <laughs> Perfecto. Okay. Todo bien. Bueno. No va a pintar. <laughs> What the heck kind of kinky shit you guys got going on in here? Pigs <laughs> in the toilet, man. <laughs> the only thing missing is my butt crack showing. <laughs> no, kid's hiding that well. <laughs> That's a must. So how what goes today's learning class? project? Pretty well, man. <laughs> I feel like a genuine plumber. <laughs> That's the start of your career. Got the new piece going on already? Looks good. good. I was giving them their lesson today and just how to change the head because we bought a brand new pump for the manual Jabsco in the crew cabin here. And the old one had a leak. So it was leaking water constantly into the floor. So we went about to take out the old one and put in a brand new one today. So that is what Rob is changing now with extra assistance from Kit. <laughs> Where's the old one? Uh, it's in the trash. Oh no. Uh, no? Okay. no, no, that's the spare part. We get new gaskets for that one and we just have it rebuilt and that way if this one ever breaks again, we just bolt the old one back on. That's beautiful. Cause yeah, we could be specific or something and you know, that yeah. breaks, even if somebody sits on it, breaks it, the whole yeah. thing breaks off anything, at least you got a new one you can break put back on as a backup so yeah important things don't just throw out your old parts rebuild reuse <laughs> there will be a day you will thank me for that advice so yeah this is the old part here recovered from the trash <laughs> we don't throw these away just yet it's still a backup component because it still functions but it had a leak out of the nozzle here there was a bad seal so I had done some looking into it and to replace all the seals and everything, you could buy everything to rebuild this pump for about $65. So all rubber gaskets, seals, clamps, everything like that. Then I found to buy the entire new pump was $85. Well, duh, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Rebuild this one and save $20 or replace the whole thing with a brand new one. So that way if there's any fractures in the, cause we've had these things where they do crack at the base or something before, so keeping the old one, that's why we do that, just in case if we need a replacement plastic housing, here it is. The whole thing still functions, it just has a leak, which is a bad gasket. So. We could get the gasket set again to rebuild this one, which I probably won't do, but until I actually get another one of these as a brand new backup for another $85, which, you know, maybe we'll do in Panama or something, 
we keep this on board until then for just such an emergency. Because sometimes people might fall into the toilet or drop something heavy on it, break this plastic, you know, and then it's it's gone. Having this piece, <laughs> the shit test, yeah. Having this piece on hand is the difference between having no toilet and working toilet, even if it leaks. So hold on to your spare parts until you know you don't need them. stuff so it is 6 30 a.m. as you can see the sun just coming up but we want to get off the boat while the varnish dries so we can stop touching it and screwing it up so we got all this trim in here and everything a hundred times a day somebody coming up and down just to keep messing up the varnish so we're gonna varnish everything go for our morning walk around town and let it dry while we're gone this is the start of today's little adventure. We'll see where it leads us. Where is Dicky? Hey, where is Dicky? You are so lucky, man, big boy. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, she loves you a lot. Look, he's in the clowns. Black the Rick, yeah. you give me the box, uh, the cardboard box with all the stuff inside for our gift. Thank you so much. <laughs> Capitan? That looks like it. Okay, so we can get ready to start mounting this on here again. But give us an idea what it's going to look like, at least anyway. Wow, it's so nice, the station. So we need to fix the compass. And yeah, we just clean up a little bit afterwards. Yeah. But it's so cool. But that's it. Hey guys, what do you think? It's so cool. All wow. Right, well, that's a project we've been waiting for years. I've been waiting for years to replace this piece of junk, the old one. <laughs> it's just yeah, bad. Yeah, uh, where is the, wait. This is very to put in a museum, you know? Uh-huh. All right, two thumbs up, one project complete. Next, I ended up back at the wood shop because they made me an offer I couldn't refuse to replace our freezer cabinet lid, the one that I had made out of plywood, with a proper solid wood cover. That sounded great to me, so they're cutting the pieces out as we speak. Maddie's got a blush face, what's happening? <laughs> After a lot of week, I think it's more two and a half, arrive your gift from Cali. Oh, Serbian Traga. Yeah, from Alessandro, Quinte, uh, Alessandro uh, and Elenia. Our friends in Cali. Yeah. Muchas gracias. I heard a little hint about this, that something was coming. 
Oh, nice. Now that, that's a souvenir from Colombia. The new camera. The new camera strap to replace this old bad boy from Brazil. <laughs> that was a gift from a friend years and years ago, but yeah, it's time to retire and I wanted to get one from Colombia, but I could never find one, but thank you so much, guys. So much appreciated. I salute you. Perfect timing, just before we leave for next adventure. Great memory and something I'll have with me on my camera every single day. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you. Thanks for picking it up. It's my name, and you came to me. Yeah, <laughs> it came to her name. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say. All I know, it was time for a muy fría, muy fría cerveza, a very cold beer. Yeah, this is a big project, a very big project, muy grande. But yeah, we're knee deep, knee deep in it today. Can hardly talk. Been doing this for several days already now, and now we're getting down to the wire. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> a million wires. <laughs> Shit. If you guys could see how much wire, well actually this is how much wire I cut out of the nav station just today. <laughs> this is all wiring that I've just cut out of the nav station and removed that was no longer necessary because we're replacing with all new gear. So, yeah. You could say my day has been fun, to say the least. But if you look back here, you see we do have our old panels out now. So this is my right-handed panel. This is getting replaced. This is getting replaced. This is going to be going to the new panel. And of course the left-hand panel, that's this guy. I've already removed the other components. The stereo is still here. I'm just going to donate that to a friend on shore. It still works fine. We just, we don't use it anymore. But that is all retired. And we have our new panels completed, varnished, laid out, everything's ready. So I put in the first component, the first Raymarine uh, Axiom. You see we got position for the second one, then our weather station, the other two gauges there. The second panel is over here. This is the one for the right side. And I can't pick it up because nothing is secured here yet. I'm just laying everything out the way I want it. But we've got our iPad, you know, touch screen for monitoring electrics. We've got our 13 inch monitor that's going to replace the bigger one that's on my desk now for the security system. So this is where I'll be able to monitor all the cameras when I'm working. And this hole here is for the VHF. So now we are moving on to installing the gear in the panels. And that's where the complication begins because now it's got to kind of all happen at once. Everything has to go in at the same time. And that involves the AIS system as well because this needs to be mounted and hooked up to the VHF radio at the same time. So all the power connections are at the same place, the antenna connections the same place, hooked into the CTOC network bus, everything like that. So I'm just deciphering all of this in my mind. And yes, I said it breaks down to one component at a time, one wire at a time, and I haven't lost sight of that. It's just that I have a million things going on all at once, so it gets a little bit mm, boof sometimes. But I'm doing okay. It's going to be fine. So next, of course, we have our other panels for the cockpit done, so we need to start mounting our gauges in there as well. That's going to happen at the same time because everything is going to connect to the SeaTog bus at the same time. All these beautiful new gauges. That you know, can't wait to get all this stuff hooked up and running. And the panels turned out beautifully, so I think it's going to look really, really nice. So that's all coming together. Now, next on my list is just to mount the rest of the components and then start wiring them up. Now this is the second MFD multifunction display, the Axiom 9-inch. And you can see they always come with these the pedestal mounts, so you can mount it like that, or you can mount it on a wall like that, or anything that you want. But 
we're not using these for this particular mount because they also come with the optional panel mount. So we're going to disconnect this. I'll just show you quickly how this works. This is pretty cool. They've got a nice system. I just uh, experimented with it putting in the first one. It was super easy and really fast. So we just unscrew and remove the pedestal mount, like so. And the second gauge is just going to drop right in the hole right here, like so. So you can see, I've got it cut out so they all line up and match. We flip it over, and they have these two brackets, which are very nicely crafted, very easy to install. And this little package, what is it here? Yeah, fixings. <laughs> I love it. Not nuts and bolts, and just fixings. That's cool. So we're going to open that up. Okay. And we have all of our shafts and lock nuts. So that is all we need here. And these basically just thread into these brass receptacles on the back of the display. And you just put them in finger tight. Like so. Yeah, that's four, and then we've got the two brackets, and they just go on following the contour of the housing, like so. And then just put on the thumb wheels, and just start, start tightening them up just till they become finger tight, so we won't want to over tighten it yet, because we still need to align everything on the other side. Oops. Second one in place. Okay, all right, so that's finger tight, so now we'll flip it over. Then we just have a look and make sure that it's lined up perfectly straight, which it is. So, now I will just tighten them all a little bit over finger tight. There we go. And lock it in. Check the ones on the other side. Okay, we're good. And you can see, we've got dual Raymarine Axiom displays mounted on my nav panel. We turn these around, we see they're all lined up nice. We can pull these off. And that is what it's going to look like with our dual Axiom displays. Very, very nice. I'm liking it so far. And then this guy is going to go underneath it. This is my ambient weather station. Now this is the same station that feeds our website with all of our current weather statistics. If you guys haven't seen it, you should have a look, it's pretty cool. It actually tracks all the weather data that we've been experiencing for however long. You can go back as far as you want, but you can monitor it directly from our website at www.sailingsophisticatedlady.com. Check it out. But this guy is going to be mounted right here. And then we got our other two controllers down here that will allow me to monitor the wind instrument and the autopilot. So I'll be able to control and monitor everything right from my station now. It's going to be exceptionally cool. <laughs> but now I need to get back to mounting everything else. So I'll put these on to protect these guys in the meantime. We don't want to damage our displays before we get them nicely mounted. That looks after that. And what's next? Next, I think we'll mount the VHF radio in its slot. And then, if you look over here, you can see the wires that are left. I still have a few more to remove, but I need to do that from under the nav station. But, but for now, the most important ones are these guys. These are our Raynet computer cables. So that's the network cables. Over here, you see I've got the SeaTalk bus installed right in the back here. So there's one SeaTalk bus wire coming out here now, and that's going to be for the remote control. The other one comes across, and then you can see the other SeaTalk bus right there. So this is the SeaTalk bus that is going to feed the multifunction displays, and that's their two wires right there. So they'll both connect in here, and that'll connect them to SeaTalk for all the data through the entire system. So that's already hooked up and ready. These ones we can connect at any time. 
The only two that are left is our power cables, which are these. So each multifunction display has one of these cables. And all this is, is basically power. So you got your power. But you'll see there's two components to the cable. So this is where it connects to the back of the Axiom display. This just runs to power that I've already got connected there. So we're just going to plug these in now. That's it. And this just connects directly to the SeaTalk bus, those white cables that you saw installed there. So that's it. So aside from just hooking up a positive and a negative for each Axiom display, you just plug it into the SeaTalk bus, plug in the Raynet cable, mission accomplished. Finito. Okay, so getting back to it here, we're just going to connect all of our cables together. So we have a ground and a shield on each power cable and they're just going to get connected together. We just use our trusty wire strippers to strip back the ends. Okay, so you can see I've got our power terminals here. So this is the system from the GPS breaker. So it's labeled GPS right now. I'll have to relabel that later, but for now at least I know which wire it is, but that's the GPS breaker. And we're going to hook up our negatives. I assume by now you guys have probably got a pretty good idea how to strip wires and crimp connectors and everything like that together. But, still good to show you sometimes anyway. Some of you may not have seen. Okay, so these are our heat shrink connectors. So I'm just going to use a little heat to close them down on the wires. Like so. Okay, so now both of our MFD hookups have power. And now if we connect these cables over here to our CPOC bus. And we just line up the connectors, slide them in, and screw them down. That's one. Now if we bring those axioms over here, just for a quick test, I'm going to plug them in and make sure they power up. That way we know everything's good before we go and actually install the panel and then find out something's wrong after the fact. So I'll uncouple these as well. This is the data cables. And here we go. So this is our four hookups for the axioms. Let me grab that. So we're using two of the connectors on the back of each one of the displays. We've got our power connector and the SeaTalk bus and the Raynet data connector there. So if we go to the Raynet data connectors, power cables. You can see all these cables only go in in one direction so you can't really mess those up. Just twist and lock. Okay. Now, I will turn on the radar just for fun. And we turn on GPS. And there you can see we have power at both of the displays. So both of the icons lit up. So if I turn it on, turn it on, oops. And we'll let them warm up and see what we get. So far we got power, I just want to make sure what else we have. All right, they are both booted up. We have displays. They've locked on their GPS coordinates, both of them. 
Let's lock one in on the chart plotter and see what we get. We get our depth, so it's transmitting data through the CTOK network. That's awesome. The chart is coming through the Raynet cable, so that's the high speed data, so obviously that's working also. We can zoom in or out, whatever we want. Amazing. Let's try something else on this one. Dashboard. Oh, look. Apparent win. So we're getting all the CTOG data already. That's very, very cool. Right, let's try something different with this one. Let's go... How about the sonar? Oh, look at that. That's friggin' cool. Now we'll switch this one. Let's check radar. Yep, it's got it. Quantum 2 Doppler off or transmit. Let's transmit. Look at that. It's already tracking Doppler targets. One coming at us, one leaving us. How cool is that? <laughs> Seriously, wow. All this information is transmitting at high speed through the Raynet cable network, and then all the depth information and everything else is all coming through the SeaTog bus. So that's where, if we want to go back, chart and dashboard. We can run a high resolution or a low resolution chart up there and zoom way out here or way in, whatever we want. So we can have information set up here from the SeaTog bus or we can switch over and use it as radar. There we go. So one with a zoomed in. So we got the wide angle and the zoom here and the corresponding radar. All right, well, we know everything's working. This is good news. It's been a lot of work getting here, I can tell you that. One wire at a time. <laughs> Don't forget that, one wire at a time. Everything breaks down to its individual components, one wire at a time. But we are up and running, so now it's just a matter of hooking up the other side. Because the other side I'm going to need to connect the VHF and the AIS. We also need to hook up this guy, which is... This is the wireless hub for the second VHF station. Because we have a remote control wireless VHF. So this is something we can walk anywhere on the boat and be able to use the main ship's VHF system from the antenna at the top of the masthead, but from a pocket control. So that's cool. And this is just a wireless hub that installs back here, connects to the data bus, and then has a wireless speaker that we install up in the cockpit. And the wireless speaker just needs power hookup, two power wires, and it will automatically receive information or data from the wireless hub. So that all needs to connect and the receiver transmitter for the wireless hub. So all that stuff has to connect at the same time into our SeaTog bus. Once I get all that hooked up, get power hooked up to everything, then we can start closing everything up. But for now, it's getting on to five o'clock, so that's my cue to start closing up for the day. So we're gonna pick this up tomorrow, and I'm gonna go park my ass out and watch the sun go down with a nice chill glass of wine. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. Good success for us today. I'm very happy with the progress and we will pick it up tomorrow. Manana man. Okay, so I lied. I couldn't resist. It was only going to take another few minutes to hook up these last two gauges. So I put them in the bottom of the panel, and they just hook up with one wire, basically. And one wire connecting them. Which went where? Okay, that's it. 
This even has an independent AIS display on this guy. Starship Enterprise. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> okay, now we call it a night. <laughs> Pick this up in the morning. Cheers. Has anybody seen Rick, Captain Rick? Oh wait, he's over looking at his nav station. Captain Rick is completely mentally fried. <laughs> very draining this project. It's a big project because it's not just about installing one, two, three, four components. It's about redoing the entire system from the ground up. You guys have been along for a little while, you know. I've been replacing every component on the boat. All electronics, electrical, everything is brand new. So it's a big project and behind the project is all the wiring of course and yeah that's what most people don't get to see but that's why I'm showing it to you guys because it's a it's a big part of boat ownership. If you're going to do something long term, this is you know it pays to know this kind of stuff. So I'm just trying to show you guys a few of the I was going to say the ropes, but maybe I'm trying to show you the wires. <laughs> Either way, hope you guys enjoyed. I'm enjoying just a moment to myself, watching the world go around on my on my nav station now. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. And let's go take a look at Rick's nav station. I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> it's still a disaster, but here is cool. They're not so cool. Okay, this is the finished product. Uh, stage, this is, stage one. This is going to be the finished product tomorrow. Today, this, this is just rough to check it. We still got a lot of stuff to align and fix behind the, you know, behind the panel, but there's still more work to do here. But I just wanted to have a moment of satisfaction, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it all on and look at it work and go, fuck yeah. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, yeah. And a wrap. <laughs>